it's kind of one of my favorites only for the fact that like you get to choose what you want and um, I chose because I love magazines like growing up obviously I would like read them but now having the opportunity to like think critically about them it's kind of like oh my god like what was I reading you don't like think about it in the moment I guess and now I'm looking at um, the difference between Cosmopolitan and Maxim magazine and their depictions of masculinity and femininity and sort of how that plays into like the way that we see ourselves so yeah looking at that um, so the project is for this class called feminist social research methodologies and I'm interviewing 10 participants and asking them about um, what they see as their sort of like life timeline for what's called like autobiographically consequential or um, yeah autobiographically consequential events such as um, career, um, furthering your education, um, marriage, partnership, having children, sort of like how these young adults in college foresee their future timeline happening. Um, there's been a lot of research about this sort of emerging adulthood um, idea of people are, especially college educated people, are pushing back normal indicators of adulthood such as marriage or career or buying a home um, and sort of like that's no longer happening in people's 20s it's usually happening in people's 30s these days so I think it's interesting to talk to college students and see sort of what they expect for themselves in their lives um well all right I forgot about this um my whole goal at the end is to create a new magazine I'm not sure like where I'm going with it now which I need to figure that out but um sort of if these magazines aren't doing it necessarily the right way of how to portray men and women, what is necessarily the right way to go about it? So I guess just making it more like societal friendly and like portraying people the way that is more healthy instead of putting men and women like as two opposite entities and sort of figuring that out, I guess. Well, there's always a lot of like trend pieces in like the New York Times and that kind of thing about like emerging adulthood and it's always told from the perspective of older people who ha who are researchers like kind of looking at people already in the middle of their 20s, in the middle of their 30s, how they're making these decisions. Um, but there's really been no research on people who are still in college who don't have to make these decisions, but sort of like what they expect their life will look like in the future. Um, so I just thought it was interesting that we you know, we have all these, like this resource here, a lot of college kids, a lot of people who are gonna be very highly educated entering the workforce, and what do they think of as like their timeline for like partnership, children, committing to a career, buying a house, that sort of thing. I've never been to the basement. I didn't really even know there was a basement until this semester. I know absolutely nothing, and um, when we met with your class, it was the first time that I had gone up into the attic of it, and I was like, okay, this is a little creepy. <laughs> um, so I only see the like aesthetically pleasing, I guess, side of the house, so that's another story I've never seen. Yeah, yeah I actually didn't learn that until, I guess, Nadav's class um, came to visit our class, and I learned that, so, I mean, I... I guess it's just a place on campus that was unused. I don't know like when that tradition started of storing luggage there, but yeah, it adds another, I guess it adds another level to who uses the building and a whole other group of people who thinks about the building, which I didn't realize. So. That is actually my favorite thing. Um, before my intro class last year was in like a regular classroom in Blaustein and it was like it was nice but then this year I've had all my classes in the house and it's just like during class you'll be like all right who wants a coffee break I'm like yeah I do but it's just like especially d considering like the topics that we discuss some of them are like pretty harsh to like take in so I feel being in like a place that you feel comfortable is definitely a lot help, like more helpful, um, and it kind of like lets you release more and like feeling that like safety net. I guess is nice. It's it's a really nice space. Um, Mab Professor Seagrest loves to host dinners and receptions there for different visiting um, 
visiting artists and different visiting lecturers. So it's a really nice place to come together and just have this place that's always going to be there to talk and discuss. And it has a nice classroom and we've added some TVs, so there's like more multimedia equipment there. Um, and just having the kitchen there is nice. Like I've cooked a few dinners with classmates there and just like had study nights at the Pink House. So. Um, and then, of course, like the professor's offices are there, so you can usually always find them pretty easily. So it's just, it's a really nice space. Um, I'd say for the department, it's really nice. But then again, we're setting up in one of my other classes this program um, and getting like people to come talk to us and everything. And I feel when you try to get people from campus again to like come to the gender room and studies house, they don't like feel like they should and like they're not accepted, I feel, um, which is another issue like we should probably discuss. Um, but I'd say like as far as the department having that house, it's really beneficial. It's just a matter of getting people within the community to like know that it's open for them too. No, I mean, I don't really think most people know where it is. So like in scheduling like my interviews, I was like, let's just use the pink house. Cause like, again, that's a great resource. Um, and then I'm like, oh, 740 William Street. It's like across from the chapel and like you have to go down, like you're going downtown. Like it's kind of hard to describe to people, but it's, I mean, it's a great space and more people should use it. So.